Most of you have done plenty of dimensioning by now, but it's a skill that takes a lot of practice to get great at. So I'm going to have us run through chapter 7 in our textbook. And along with some of the exercises there, I'm going to add a couple new tools uh, provided in AutoCAD that I think can help us get better at this um, skill set. Um, before we get into that, I'd like to do a couple things to our uh, template, and that's uh, dim style, and then, well, I'll just start with dim style, and then we'll get to the next thing. Uh, so dim style is D-I-M, uh, let me, D-I-M-S-S-T-Y, or just type out dim style. I've probably had a lot of you do this already, but if not, let's open up your dim style uh, manager on standard let's hit modify uh, I change our arrow size I believe it's probably if you haven't changed this already it's probably 1.18 let's go with uh, 1 8 and then uh, under lines the extend beyond dim lines I believe that is also on most of yours 0.18 let's change that to 1 16th uh, that kind of makes it your uh, positioning and laying out your dimensions a lot cleaner. So hit OK on that, close, go file save as, uh, change your file types to DWT. That should jump your it to the fold the template folder, and then whichever however you name that template, I have it as WITCC standard. Hit save, and yes. Um, actually, well, it's good. Go ahead and do that. Um, the other thing I want to show is under the annotate tab for dimensions, we can set a default layer. So every time you open up the dimension layer or start a dimension, you don't have to go up and change your layer. So I'm going to set mine to the dimension layer. So now whenever I do a dimension, it's just going to be on the dimension layer and I don't have to switch over to it. And then I'm going to hit uh, save because I was already on the that. And I'm going to close that out. Well, I'm going to open up. There. Uh, so that's all I need you to do to change, uh, needed you to change on your templates. Uh, so what we'll be covering beyond just dimensions is uh, uh, the tool, the parametric constraints tools in AutoCAD. I've already done one video on this. If you've already watched it, this is going to be a review on that. I'm going to, in that video, I only did a front and a top view. In this video, I'm going to do a three view drawing. So there'll be some new stuff in here. Uh, and then when I'm done with this, I'd like you to read page 720 and 721. Uh, that's rule number one on dimensions. It's got a couple different steps and then once you get that read we'll go into uh, the exercises for the day. Uh, so the first thing I want to put on here is a point and I've covered this before but I'll do it again here. Uh, to do a point it's called it's PO and then I'm gonna put at 0 comma 0 and you've probably noticed that nothing really seemed to pop up except it's right there that tiny little gray dot uh, so that's not that helpful, but if we go to P type, like so, that'll bring up this dialog box and you can select a, a, any of these shapes for your point. I'm just going to select that one and say OK. So what I want this point in here for is that this is going to be where I anchor my views. I don't want anything ever to move from this point, basically. So the first thing we're going to need is our parametric tab up here. So if you right click anywhere on any of these tab labels, you'll get show tabs and then down at the bottom parametric. Uh, it'll pop up at the back if you want it uh, in a different location, you can easily just drag it. Uh, so here are your geometric constraints, uh, collinear, coincident, concentric, parallel, vertical, horizontal, equal, symmetric. There's we'll be using these a lot so you'll get very familiar with each of them uh, but the one I want for this is just simply called fix uh, to start 
you can come up here and click these buttons obviously but like with everything with AutoCAD there's always a, a keyboard command and that is, starts with GC for all of these geometric constraint and I want G fix I'm gonna press enter and now it's asked me to select point or object well it's a point so I'm gonna select it now this point cannot move which is what I want uh, the part I'm going to be drawing is on page 1614 from chapter 6, um, if you want to follow along. So what I'm going to start with is kind of, I'm going to box in the part with some rectangles, the overall dimensions on each of my views. Um, so I'm going to use construction lines like always. Copy selection. I have to go up. 1.25. One of the nice, I'm going to follow the dimensions here, but um, one of the nice things about parametric constraints is you can kind of be sloppy at the beginning. Um, it, not necessarily the best way of going about it, but you don't have to put as much thought into how you lay out things because you'll be using the dimensional constraints to actually um, place and size all of your features. Uh, okay, i get back to this. So you'll find the Parametric constraints aren't necessarily the most user-friendly thing to use in AutoCAD. Um, one of the trickier things here to, for us to uh, create is our miter line. Uh, I believe I have a good solution for that. It'll probably blow up in my face as I'm doing this, but let's give this a go. Um, so our miter line, we need it at a 45 degree angle. So I'm going to put two lines in here. I created another layer that I'm going to use. I'll show you in a second here. Um, I'm just going to create an X basically and that's going to I'm going to use them together to basically constrain this line so it's always at 45 degrees so we can shoot our lines up and over. Um, so I'm going to quick first, this is where the auto constrain I said it doesn't always do it do what you want it to do so don't be completely dependent on it but uh, I want these two lines to be perpendicular to each other so I'm gonna come up to perpendicular this object that object those are perpendicular now and now um, I could do an auto constraint but I don't think it is gonna just work exactly the way I want it so I'm gonna it's gonna be a bit of a tedious process but bear with me so I'm gonna use the coincident I'm gonna do the end point of this line and then right click object to this, hit the space bar, click the end point of the line, right click object, this line, and then just quick go through each point. Um, see, you can, if you're on this line, you can easily go to the midpoint, and we don't want that. We want the, see this, we want the X to pop up down here. So let's zoom in here. That's going to make it easier. Okay. It has to be object because the construction lines are infinite and it, the constraints don't always play nice with that. Alright, so let's test this here. If I click on this construction line here and drag on it. Okay, so I'm going to hit escape before I go any farther. So I need to put some more constraints on this. The, I want these to be vertical and these to be horizontal. I think auto constraints a good that's a good usage for auto constraint there. Okay, now if I drag on it there. Now it appears to be moving the way I want it to. Yep. And then if I drag on any of these, it's all locked down. Okay, so that's good. Uh, so this, when you're doing your, your uh, miter line, this would probably get fairly confusing. So that's why I created another layer. You can kind of name this anything you want. But I just called it, I already undid. So I'm going to make a new one. Uh, come here, click on there, new. I'll just call it um, miter 90. And then I'm going to, oh, you didn't like me saying that. Miter 90, enter. There we go. 
So select this one, come up here and set that to miter 90, and then I want to basically shut that layer off so I don't see that. I said I was going to do the drawing on page 614 from chapter 6, but that uh, turned out to be probably more complicated than I need to go right now. Uh, mainly the reason I'm stopping is not because I can't do it, but it's just because it would become a very long and very boring video if I continued on with that. So I'm going to simplify it down to a very, I'm going to simplify the drawing to something that uh, won't take me as long to put together and you don't have to sit there and watch for an hour. Um, so I'm just going to have a hole on my front view and a hole on my top view. Uh, and then a little cutout. So it should be very simple and won't take me as nearly as long to put together and bore you out of your minds. Okay, so I'm going to finish up my little framing here. Uh, this is something, when you do do this, it might be a good idea to make a template out of it once it starts working, because then you could just open this up, change it to the size you need, um, and then get going versus making this every single time. So. I'm going to, like I said, finish this up real quick. I need to put some points and then do an auto constrain. I'm putting points at each of these intersections. Select everything here and type in auto constrain. Okay. All right. I'm going to have a notch out about right here, so I'll need a line there and I can just be sloppy with this because I'll fix these with the di dimension constraints and what these will allow us to do is control the hidden lines in our other views Be careful with this auto constrain. Just select what you want. Not and don't select something you don't because it could screw you up. Alright, I'm gonna move this guy up and see how that goes. Oh come on. Okay. Alright. Um so I need Lines going down on my miter, so that's where points come in again. So I'm going to constrain these points to the miter line. Auto constrain. Now, if I drag on anything, let's drag on the circle itself. Zoom out. And you can see our points glide along our miter line like that. So I can do a rotate about this point, what the hell, maybe I can't do a rotate, I'm just going to do a copy then, copy, there, there, and there, select all, auto constrain. Let's test that out again. Seems to be doing what we want it to. Sliding on the miter. Perfect. Okay, let's make the hole here sub, uh, symmetrical on the part. So that's GC symmetric. It gives you a couple options. You can do objects or two points. I tend to like to use two points. So two points. Select first point here. Second point here and then your symmetry line. So what's going to be in the center of the part all the time. So click and there we go. Um, okay. I think I'm about ready to do some line work here. And we should be able to use auto constraint with these two and it'll be just done.
Okay. Uh, last bit. This guy can actually just turn into a visible line instead of construction. And same with this one. Okay, I'm going to select everything. And auto constrain. Um, in this instance, I'm going to select everything, but there might be an instance where you don't want to get everything all at once. You want to take it slowly and do the auto constraint or do them manually. But for something this simple, this should work. Okay, our last step now is to apply the dimensional constraints. So I'm going to use a dimensional linear for most of these. And that's where points come in handy. It's good. Good. Uh, if you want, so I just try to do, um, so if you have an edge like this, you can go to object, type O, or right click object, select the edge. Now if I set this to 0.5, and everything should, looks like we did it right. Everything moved the way I wanted it to. Right click object, set say to 2, and double check our line work. Everything seems to be moving correctly. So from here to the center point of the circle, I want it to be let's say 2, 5. Obviously that's our holes too big so to do a circle you have to do DC diameter or radius. I'll do diameter. Set the object and we'll make that also 0.25. See if everything followed. Yep, our hidden lines are following the same size and location. Uh, let's go DC linear again. From here to here. These are all just random numbers, obviously. Okay, DC linear. Set our depth. I can set that on the top or right view. Two. Okay. That. See, that's a that's a good example of what can happen when you don't properly have everything constrained. It didn't wreck anything, but it can go real bad depending on what you're doing. But it got that. It once I moved that, that hole got real small, but it's easily fixed. DC diameter. Click and we'll make that 0.125. Everything seems to be working correctly. A couple more here. DC linear. The placement on these don't. It doesn't necessarily matter. Just place them so you can see them. Uh, these can get real complex real fast. Uh, so just be mindful. Let's think here. That should do it. Now if I change my hole here to 0.25, everything appears to be moving right. Um, if your points start looking real big, uh, you can just do a regen. I'm not sure if I already said that, but that'll kind of change the size of them. Um, I haven't played around with it too much, but there's a point size in here. If you want to go 2% and get them a little smaller, you can play around with the sizes there. Okay, uh, I believe that said if we kind of play around with it a little bit to see how it reacts to different changes that's going to be the end goal is we want to make sure whenever I when you make a change with one of these dimensions everything moves into place um, the very end goal with that is that you would have kind of when a, got a customer comes in for a change you just all you have to do is click a dimension 
depending on their what kind of changes they're making, click it once, change it, and go to your drawing, make a PDF, and you're just done. You don't have to start from scratch or worry about fixing a model when you you'll get it when you do it enough. Um, I'm going to quick dimension this part and show you I okay let me go here oh this is one thing we can do is throw a linear dimension in between your views to control their spacing which can be pretty helpful uh, two Um, so when you're done with all your constraints and you want to if you want to hide any of these the you come over to the parametric and just click on hide all uh, same goes for the constraints themselves once you need to, if you need to see them again, just click on show all. Okay, now I'm going to dimension. So, as I've said in other videos, you can do point to point, but it can cause issues. I tend to prefer either a whole edge or edge to edge when you dimension. Those seem to uh, retain their association a lot better. Um, so this is where rules uh, be very pay attention to the rules on page uh, 720 chapter 7, 7 page 720 and 21 uh, don't I'm not going to read off all these rules, but uh, spacing is a big deal. Don't let um, certain line types cross over. Read through them. I'm going to be a stickler like I always have been on this. So uh, the rule set of spacing uh, is a good general rule of thumb, but it won't always work. But the main thing is just to keep things consistent. Um, a nice thing to use when you're uh, dimensioning and you did something like I just did there, you come over to annotate and there is the adjust space. So I'm going to click on that. First thing it says is select base dimension, which should be this one. And then uh, we can either enter value or set auto. I'm going to do enter value and I'm going to put 0.25. So there's really no reason to have overly sloppy dimension because there are several tools in here to help you keep quickly uh, clean up and make your dimensions neat. Okay, so now I'm going to test my parametric constraints and see, and I'll show you, hopefully, that when I make a change all it'll take is a dim regen and the part will still be good to go. Um, so we'll come to our parametric. I'll show all these. Um, sometimes it doesn't show them all. This is a so if it doesn't show them all, you can also do this uh, parameters manager. And what these are are each of the dimensions here. Um, let's see if I can, there it is. You can name these. So this one it could be width. So you're not having to remember uh, D10, D2, what each of them are. Uh, D7, I can name that one depth. And this could all be part of the a template you make. So we could do a height, width, depth template that we open up, throw our basic dimensions in, put in our line work, 
and then we're off running. Um, there was one more I want. There it is. That one's height. Um, I don't know why sometimes they won't come back. Um, I think it's just one of those things where AutoCAD's awful, so we'll have to live with it. If you find out how to bring them back, let us let me know. Otherwise, this pro parameters manager is actually probably a better way of handling it, anyways. Um, let's make that. 3.25 and our overall depth uh, 1.5 okay go over here I'm gonna hide those all again and looks like everything changed the way we want it to if do a quick dim regen just to make double sure everything's good and that's it um, these first exercises are pretty simple parts, so this shouldn't be too hard to do. It's gonna probably be a little frustrating at first, but it's, it's worth it in the long run.